Well, hello, everybody. I just want to take a minute um, and make sure everybody can hear me. If you could just let me know. This is just a test, test time. A couple minutes early. I see people are coming in. Thank you so much for taking time out of your evening and being here. Um, I'm very excited about that. And I am testing it with my phone as well. Perfect. I can hear it. So I'm going to mute that so it doesn't show up. You don't have to hear an echo. But welcome. So Rose, hi. Nice to um, thank you so much for letting me know that the sound's coming through. Kathleen, welcome. Welcome. Um, so in Texas, I hope it's nice and warm down there. It has been warmer here, if you call above freezing um, warm. So welcome, Carol. So nice to have you with us tonight. We are going to get started in about two, two and a half minutes. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited to get started. Last night we had some tech issues and my husband, you might hear him coming in and out. He's kind of looking after everything. He was not home yesterday. And my husband actually is my IT guy. He is an IT guy, an excellent IT guy. But he wasn't here yesterday. So we ran into some issues. So I'm glad you're here today. So Kathleen from rainy Los Angeles. We're supposed to get a ton of rain. I couldn't believe it. I'm in Michigan. We've had so much snow this year. We're supposed to get a ton of rain on Thursday. So I'm wondering what that's going to turn a foot and a half of snow into. So rainy San Diego too. So you guys are all, all you West Coasters are getting some rain there. So yeah, we're all going to be getting um, some rain around here as well. So I know some people are still coming in. We should have a smaller group tonight. Last night was... Um, large, like we had almost 50 people and um, that might have been part of the tech issues, but I think really it was the internet. Prior to yesterday, you've only had a tenth of an inch of rain. Oh my goodness, Kathleen, that does not sound good. It seems to be one extreme or the other lately for us around here too. It's either very, very cold or very warm. It's supposed to be almost 60 here in Michigan um, in January on Thursday. And rain and they're saying thunderstorms which is very odd but um yeah that'll be kind of cool so i am um, really excited to get started it's already eight o'clock it feels like time goes fast when you're dealing with tech issues if um i'm just going to show you real quick if i flip the screens i'm checking on my cell phone um I want to make sure that it also switches for you. Last night, it was not switching. Oh, and there it goes. Okay, so can you let me know if you saw a different screen real quick? Um, let's see. I'm going to do it one more time. Because last night, I did not even realize that they did not... Um, See the screens. Oh, good. So you did. No one in the whole presentation, I made all these slides and we had all this information and all of a sudden, like 15 minutes in, people, um, they were like realizing that I was talking about things we're seeing on a new screen. So if you're hearing me and then you see the new screen later, please keep in mind that there is a delay. It usually runs about two minutes, which anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, I would say with the internet issues that we've been having around here, it's probably closer to the two minutes there. So welcome, Amy and Ayana. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, it's so nice to see everybody here. So Amy from New York, I heard you guys, they're saying is that snowstorm Friday and Saturday gonna hit us or hit you? So. That will be interesting. We're kind of hunkering down for the weekend, so I can take that snow. But why don't we go ahead and get started? I know people always come in a little bit late, and that's fine. I know teachers are so very, very busy, but I also want to be able to finish and have you um, have you all set by 9 o'clock because I know teachers need their sleep as well. If you're going to be patient and kind to your students, you definitely need enough sleep. Oh, so... 
Diana, so you have had some chilly weather in Florida as well. I lived in Florida and people would be surprised to be chilly in January. It's like, well, it's still January. So um, yeah, always interesting. So just to get started formally, my name is Jeanette Stein. I'm the creator of highschoolmathteachers.com and I love working with teachers um, in helping them learn new tips, strategies, things that can help their classroom go easier without adding more time into their evening. Um, because that's the last thing we need is for us to be stressed out. How can you be a good teacher all day with your students if you're coming to school all stressed out that you didn't get everything done at night? So that's my big, my big passion is helping teachers to find those strategies. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how you can get through everything in one school year without feeling like, um, you know, like you didn't get it done, like your students are lacking. So if you failed at covering every standard in the past, please understand that I am not passing any blame. I do not believe that's your fault. I think things are changing very quickly. Standards are changing and tests are changing. And every time we kind of get our feet under us, it happens again. And so please don't ever take anything I say as a criticism, as um as a teacher for a long, long time, I understand that this is not for lack of effort and this is not your fault. This is something that we um, we really had thrown at us very quickly. Um, I'd say in the last seven to 10 years of teaching, it's changed very quickly. If you've been concerned in the past that you can't succeed, like it cannot possibly be done, I really want to help you see that there are some other ways that we can do this and make it easier. Please know that I understand that lawmakers and we have ever-changing standards, they make teaching so hard, but we can find a better way to kind of apply what we're gonna learn today to every teaching situation. So we're here to show you how to build your classroom with connections. So we're gonna talk all about making connections, not only in relationships, but also in the content and also to the real world and how powerful that can be to helping you get through all of your standards in one year without having to waste a lot of time at home. I don't want you at home creating new materials because the kids didn't get it the first time. I don't want you at home grading retakes of the test. We want to, to get the kids successful the first time so that you have less work as well. So it's a win-win. And that's why I kind of named it without giving up your evenings, right? We don't want to give you extra work in the evening. We don't want, you know, some of these things that people come up with are so wonderful, except if you've got children, that's going to be really, really hard. So Kathleen, will you make copies of the slides available after the webinar? Yes, absolutely. Um, anybody who attended last night got the slides today along with a certificate of completion um, because I know some of you can turn that in for PD. We have had some tech issues, so um, the certificates just might take a day or two to get to you. But yeah, I'll have those slides for you um, either right after the webinar or um, tomorrow morning. So um, my assistant um, usually works, he prefers to work very early and I try to honor that. So he has the evening for his family. So he likes to get up and work at like from six to two. So um, he's absolutely amazing. So he usually gets all that stuff done for me. So how will today's work? You guys are, you ladies and gentlemen, sorry, um, Michigan thing to say you guys, I'm really trying not to. But um, how will today's webinar work? If you have any questions because of that delay, feel free to throw them right in the chat. If you want to make sure I see your question, um, I'm gonna mark Kathleen's here. She had a question, I've answered it, so I'll just check it off there. But if you wanna make sure I see it, you can just turn it red. And your end, it might be green. Um, they just changed the way this looks a little bit on the service. So just go ahead and hit that button and I'll make sure that I get that answered for you um, because you can put them in at any time. And that way at the end of each section, we're not wasting time waiting for the questions to be put in. No one wants to sit and stare at the screen for three hours. Um, but I do want to take a minute if you've never been on one of my trainings before, I do see a lot of new names here. Um, I strongly encourage you to collaborate. So like yesterday, we had a whole conversation about the length of the class periods and people were trying to help each other out with that because somebody had a class period that was only 30 
eight minutes and he was trying to um, fit all the content in and people were helping each other out. Even as I was talking, that is encouraged. Um, and please don't worry about using the chat box. That's why I use this service. Cause I love that. We can have that chat box there for you. There it goes. So in about 35 minutes, I'm going to share with you how you could get some more help. If you wanted even more help than what you're going to get, you're going to get some strategies. But of course, I can't teach everything about how we're going to make these connections in less than an hour. And so um, in a bit, I will share with you how you can get more help and make sure that um, that's available to you and you know how to contact me for more questions. So my goal from this web class is I want to help teachers who want to cover all the standards in one year and the teachers who want to improve their teachings, you know, the test scores, retention, all of that without listing it all out. But I do not want you to have to give up your time at home. Um, I don't want you to feel stressed out that there's more. There's always going to be more to do. Teachers are just have people with big hearts. So you are never going to allow yourself to feel done. But I am not going to throw more on you that you have to do outside of the classroom. Um, all of these strategies can be implemented right within your class, right within the time you already have. And that's very, very important to me as well. So who am I? I am a passionate mathematics classroom teacher of 17 years. I am absolutely fascinated by how the brain works, how we can use that to our advantage uh, to help students learn, even if they've uh, previously struggled. So there's things as simple as rewording something. I saw a study where, I don't know if you remember the old game Perfection. They still have them around. They're just not quite as common as they were when they first came out, I think in the 80s, maybe late 70s. I'm aging myself. But it's this game where you have to put all the shapes into this tray, you know, and they only fit one way. And there's a timer. And at the end, it pops up in your face. So it kind of adds this element of stress to the activity you're doing. And what they noted, they did a study on it actually, which is kind of funny, but this gentleman's like, come on, you can do it. Why aren't you going faster? Let's go, hurry up, get at it, get at it. And not one of those people were able to finish. They put the same gentleman in the room with a different group of people. And they were like, I know you can get this. That's right, good start. All right, you've got it, encouraging voice and they could all do it. So I just, um, I love learning about how the brain works, how we can use, not necessarily changing the words, but usually it's changing the tone in which we say the words. And I love supporting and encouraging math teachers of at-risk students. At-risk students are very special. We're usually, as teachers, called to help those very special students, but if we're not careful, they can really drain us. And so I want you to have strategies that can work with them and I want to encourage you what you're doing is very very important work so can you relate I was a teacher with 17 years of experience in the very beginning I was a single woman who this was my whole passion I had no children at home I had no husband at home and I was able to spend all the time in the world um, working on lesson plans and all that and I loved it, you know, it was new and exciting and I felt very successful in the classroom. But as the years went on, I um, met my husband. We um, adopted four children. We have two biological children. So within less than two years, I was a mom of six and all of a sudden I didn't feel very successful anymore. And I really didn't have the time at home to spend like I used to. And I didn't feel like a good teacher and I really wanted to feel successful. I didn't want my students to feel unsuccessful and I certainly didn't wanna feel unsuccessful. So what happened is I started looking for new strategies that would work and then I, um, <laughs> Rachel, you're cracking me up. <laughs> no superwoman here, just trying to do the best I can. So the new strategies would work for a while. And I asked my principal, my principal was really supportive, thank goodness, because I know that's not always the case. So I try to be extremely grateful for that. But I started going to a lot of PD, a lot of um, professional developments and learning some tools. But they seem to be all like either it's project or problem based learning or it's you know teaching with manipulatives or it's making relationships with the students. And it never brought it all together. And when I started realizing what I needed to do is bring that together, I needed to connect the students, not only to me, you know, we needed to have a solid, healthy relationship, but we also need to connect 
the learning to the learning they've done before, as well as things that they know from outside of the classroom. And when I really started doing that well, it forced my students to think a lot more. I got a lot of student pushback in the beginning. This is where having community, that's why I encourage you to talk to each other in the chat box. Student pushback is normal anytime you're doing positive change. You're going to get student pushback because if it's positive change, they're probably having to work more and they don't like it. Um, but what happened is I really stuck with it. I had the support of my administrator that really helped me with that. And there were days where I, I remember going down and I was like, I don't know if this is working because I was getting pushback and that's okay. Um, if you stay positive as if the teachers that can stay positive through that pushback, it really, that's what I really had to challenge myself with. My kids took the PSAT in eighth grade. And then at, at the end of ninth grade and my struggling students, that I worked so hard with on this change grew 1.8 years of growth in one year. And those were all at-risk students. That was 100% at-risk students. So I was very, very excited with that. So it's not the relationships, and I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, I, sorry, I'm getting distracted. It's been kind of frustrating with my internet, but it's not the relationships or the content, it's the relationships and the content in the connected classroom. So I think you can, if you're spending your evening here, you really want to be a great teacher and you're always wanting to learn more and you really want to feel successful. You want your students to feel successful. I'm sure you can relate. I'm sure you've also can relate to the time when you heard that great idea and you started getting that pushback. And so we're going to talk about some of the things to work through that because um, that can be really difficult. So what we're going to cover um, to address all of those things is we're going to talk about how to prepare your students for the assessments without reteaching the same thing over and over again. Um, well, the, the template I use called the secret it kind of cracks me up, but tip two, how to use connections to help your struggling students stay motivated even when the concepts get difficult. Isn't this where we always see them shut down? And then secret number three, how to use the connected learning with any curriculum or teaching style. So if your admin walks in tomorrow and says, well, next year we're gonna try this. This is timeless. The connecting, connecting things to the learning is supported by the brain research and it's just timeless. So for the first one, how to prepare your students for assessments without reteaching the same thing over and over again. And I would love to know, do you, have you ever felt this way? Um, these would be like misconceptions of some sort. So some math teachers might think, I must spend time reteaching. My students just don't retain information. Can you relate to that one? I bet you can. I've been there. Most um, teachers have been there. It can be really, really um, frustrating. So let me tell you a quick story. What we had, what I was going through is I was spending so much time reteaching. I was reteaching so many of the concepts that they were supposed to have learned. This is when I was teaching ninth grade algebra one. So many concepts that they should have learned in eighth grade, seventh grade, maybe even, you know, the multiplication tables in third grade. That when I got to the difficult concepts, we're talking exponential functions and systems, you know, those things that kids traditionally need a little more time with is um, I had to go even faster because I spent so much time reteaching, which is crazy because those are where they need more time connect making connections and in practicing because it's very hard. Thank you, Brenda. Yes, from Friday to Monday, right? So if, if we can stop reteaching, if we can go through it and spend the right amount of time every single day, making sure that they get it and they're making the connections, we're really going to be able to move through. So I just have to say, I'm so pleased the technology is working because I was feeling a little nervous about it. I, I don't ever want to waste your time. So for the strategy number one is I always like to allow time for students to make the connections on their own and ask questions to help them if they get stuck. So this can be really difficult. So what I like to do is I start my class each and every day with an activity. 
And each of those activities are meant to kind of remind them of something they may have learned either in a previous course or outside of my course. So maybe they learned something in their English class, biology class, from skateboarding, from playing a video game. And I try to bring that into the activities that we do each day. Yeah. Amy, yes, everybody, everybody forgets everything over Christmas break. Um, the one thing I would say about forgetting is it, uh, the second time they learn something, it will go faster. And the third time they learn something, it'll go faster. It's kind of like you can give them those prompt words where they will start to remember much quicker. So that can be, yeah, but it is frustrating when they um, come back after a break. So I love to use the activities. There's also one other thing I want to talk about with these connections. And I just saw this on Brain Games. I was watching this with my, with my kids at home. And I wanted to show you just this clip because I was watching this. And I was so shocked um, that my kids, my 17-year-old at home, who is a great student, by the way, and the daughter of a decent math teacher did not get this and it really surprised me. Now my little one certainly did not get this. So I'm going to make sure, see if the mic will work really well here and see if it'll play. Oh, much better. Okay. So it did this yesterday too. Let's see if I can. Nope. Here. So brain games is such a fun So older brains should have the advantage. Take a look at the numbers on your screen. They're following a strict pattern. Can you figure out the next number in the sequence? Got your answer? It's 34. If you got that right, there's a good chance you're over the age of 34. In fact, you're probably over 44. What makes me say that? According to brain scans, young people tend to use only one side of their brain to complete specific tasks, whereas older adults are more likely to activate both hemispheres. This pattern is known as bilateralization. It allows older brains to make more solid connections and solve problems like this one more efficiently. And for those of you who haven't figured out the pattern, all you do is add the two preceding numbers to get the next number. For using both their left and right hemispheres, that round goes to the older brains. But we're going to give both teams a chance to drive home the point in this next game. So I just found that amazingly um, eye-opening. I used to get very distracted with my students when they couldn't figure out a simple pattern or they couldn't connect things together that we had learned. We learned something yesterday. They learned something last week. They saw something on TV and they weren't able to connect it maybe to the angle or the slope or whatever concept we're looking at, the exponential growth. Uh, they weren't able to make that connection. So what I started doing was giving them activities each and every day. So I wanted to pull up a couple and show you and give you the example of how I help them learn how to look for these patterns and how to make connections. So let's just pull this up here. We got, I have a couple here that I had ready to go. So my internet at home is a little bit, this is where I got nervous because it's a little bit slow. But it's going, it's getting better. My husband was working on it. Um, so unit two, let's see, week six. Let's talk about some inverse functions. So if you're one of the members, we had quite a few members on the call last night, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, so day 20, so I like to do a bell ringer right in the beginning to kind of remind them of what we did yesterday and then an activity to help really get their brain ready for the new instruction we're gonna learn. So for example, this one on inverse functions, there we go, so design a flow chart how explaining how to find the inverse of a function so after we've already let's make this bigger after we've already talked about inverse functions and what they have done previously before doing this 
in my classroom is I love to have them um, in the English class. They write the directions down to the office. And then while they're still sitting in English class, they actually need to write the directions back up to the room. And then she has them walk it and see if they did inverse function well. Did they, were they able to write the directions both down there and back? And so that might be a good option for you is have your English teacher do that because that technical writing is a huge push right now. And then what we can do is once they did that, I had them create the flow chart. And I made them think about it in a different way. So if they were going to do it one way, they had to understand it was going to be completely opposite the other way. Can they write it another way? Could they draw a picture to explain it? And then if they don't get it, I start asking them questions. I do not show them exactly how to do it at this point. Because these activities are to help them make connections. And if I connect it for them, it's not going to be as effective. So if I can get the students to make the connections, and I might even have to start with, well, what is a flow chart? I know you've seen them in English or biology. What is a flow chart? What does it look like? How can we move through it? Um, then we talk about these. I won't tell them if they're right or wrong until later when we talk about it. We go through the PowerPoint and work through it. I want them to try it on their own because they're going to come up with different ways to do it that shows me how, um, what they're connecting it to. So Rachel just asked an excellent question. How long do you spend on one of these activities? I usually only spend no more than, I usually spend 15 minutes or less. Um, if, if we don't get all the way done, if they're working hard, um, which is, you know, I collect, I just got a bunch of questions and so it's all fresh in my mind. But how long do I spend? I spend about 15 minutes. Do I collect it? Um, it depends on the year. A lot of my students need me to collect it in order for them to work hard. Unfortunately, that external um, motivation, usually by the end of the year, I don't need to do that anymore, but it is a training period. So I try to spend 15 minutes, have them work hard, then we go through it with the PowerPoint. And then I can ask a little bit more questions. The PowerPoint, I still spend another like five minutes on the activity. So I'd probably say probably about 20 minutes. A lot of my instruction time is making the connections. So um, depending on how long your class is, you might have to cut that back a little bit. But if they can make 10 minutes worth of connections, you're going to be way better off when you start maybe teaching that new strategy of like, why do you switch the X and the Y? Well, now they have a reference. So they're going to remember what an inverse is. So it's all about that retention. So if they do this and, they, and they've and they done the walking and they've done this, I could just talk about it for maybe 10 minutes or have them work on it for five. And then we solidify it for five. Now, when I start talking about algebraically, how we work this out, they're going to understand, well, everything was opposite. I had to kind of change where I was thinking about it, right? And so they understand why the X and Y are going to change according to the real world example. So another example, um, let's see, week 24. So now we'll jump, I wanted to just get some different things here, is where we jump from linear and exponential functions, comparing them to actually combining them. So the one I chose was just the very first, um, the very first one when we make that transition. And so in this one, this sounds kind of silly, but how many of your students, if there's no graph paper, they don't think that they could graph it? Or if there's no table written out, they don't think of creating a table. So we kind of did this when we were planning this activity on purpose. This is just plain data to help them remember what it could look like. How do we know if something's exponential? How do we know it's linear? I like to start with this activity because it's Monday. And like you said earlier, they forget everything. Now, I like to push back on this. This is where students are going to get a little agitated with me. Some of my students need to graph it. They want to see it on paper. And I have graph paper all the time in a tray, and they are allowed to get up and get the graph paper if they need it at any time. So students will get a little frustrated and push back because I didn't give them the graph paper. So we always have to kind of talk about that. 
um, and work through that with them. And then I wanted to give you just a geometry um, example for all of you geometry teachers out there. So what I like to have them do a lot in geometry is figure it out themselves. So this is um, special triangles. Let's see, week 20. So if we look at this activity for special right triangles, Here's our activity. So we draw a line. I drew these in here just so you could see what the kids would be doing. And then we, I have them draw it and measure it out. And they need to be precise, which is a great practice for them. And then I have them measure the segments and actually write out um, what the ratios are. Do they realize um, that the sign is a ratio. And then they're going to actually figure out um, what do you notice, right? And then that's up to you as the teacher to ask those questions. So what does that mean about the sine or the cosine in the tangent of 30, 60? What can we learn about that? What does that tell us then about the side lengths? And so that's been really powerful when you can ask those questions and they make the rules, they're going to, um, you're going to be able to, um, yeah, go help them retain it. Um, Brenda, I am actually getting these activities from the high school math teachers community. And I'll show you at the end, if you'd like to join us in there, we have everything organized. So every standard, if you teach common core aligned, it's all there, but then all the lesson plans are also, um, editable for you so that you could work with that as well. So let's go ahead and minimize this, see if we can. I am just thrilled. Yesterday, I couldn't even pull up my examples because the internet was so slow. So this is just makes, it's funny, the little things that can make you happy. So the really, the truth is by connecting the learning to what they already know, whether it's outside the world from what they know within the math class or previous classes, you're going to spend much less time reteaching. Because when they make those connections, they don't feel so overwhelmed. You're going to be able to cover your standards on schedule. You're not going to be reteaching everything as they make those connections. So what we're going to talk about for number two is how to use connections to help your struggling students stay motivated, even when the concepts are difficult. So for me, um, I've heard teachers say to me, I'm not doing a good job with my struggling students. They just seem to fall farther and farther behind. And the further behind they are, the more they check out, right? I'm sure you can relate to students that act like that. And I'm spending a lot of time trying to help them through. And then you slow down the whole class for those struggling students. Or your struggling students are always frustrated. Um, and so then they're acting out and they cause, you know, that takes up a lot of time in your class. Or some teachers think, these kids can never catch up. This is not reasonable for me to ask them to. And I would just like to push back on that just a little bit. So let me share a story. I had a student, I'll call her B because I don't want to say her name. I loved the student, but she came from a very, very rough home. And B really clung to me. She had a love-hate relationship with me. She was one of those struggling kids who at home, adults weren't um, always safe. And so she wanted to trust me, but then it's like we'd get close and then she'd kind of freak out and push me away again. And one day, I'll never forget, she came in and she always had to sit right by my desk. So she was the first desk right by mine and it was first hour. So she's walking in and she, she sees the board and she's like, we're learning something new. I just got yesterday's work. I can't handle one more thing today. And I mean, even as adults, sometimes we feel like that. We can't handle one more thing. So I told her, B, you did great yesterday. All we're doing is adding one new thing to yesterday's stuff. You'll be great. And then her whole mindset was like, oh, oh well, yeah, I did do good yesterday. And I can, oh, if we're only adding one more thing, I can do it. Um, it's those kind of little things that can really help students 
change that attitude. Because once she had a positive attitude, she can do it. She was a very bright young lady who didn't believe she was very bright. And that's like sometimes the most heartbreaking ones, right? They've been told that they're not very bright, um, either purposefully or not very purposefully, but either way, they believe it. And so if we can help them get that mindset out, they're going to absorb more of what we say. They're going to stop falling further and further behind. So what we're going to do for strategy number two, on top of the activities, we're going to help the students see how each day builds on itself. So there, we're, I like to say it as we build on the success of yesterday. So if you ever have a day where they feel really successful, this is when you're going to really start implementing this strategy the very next day. So the very next day, you're going to maybe begin with a bell ringer. Um, I always like bell ringers to have like the day before, sometimes the week or even a class before, uh, because wherever they were successful and we can build on it for that next class period. The other thing I'd like to say about strategy number two, and I probably could have made this it, their own, um, its own slide even, it's so important. Don't get frustrated. Students are gonna need help making those connections, especially if they're coming out of difficult situations at home. The less that students are read to at home, which we know that correlates to poverty levels. If you have kids on free and reduced lunch, they're much less likely to have been read to as children. And the brain development that just naturally in all students, like we saw in that short video, as well as the social media society where um, they're doing a new study. And I can't, I'm very anxious to see the results because I've read about a study, but then they said there wasn't enough data. They're going to do another study with more data. But what they're learning is the more kids flip through Instagram or Snapchat or even adults as Facebook, it's actually changing the way the brain works. And it's having, because it has all separate pieces of information all the time, it does not make the same connections. So if you look at, they're not going to see the patterns as easy just because of their maturity level and their brain development. They're not going to make connections naturally because they don't have enough of the experiences, the books read and those kind of things. And then you throw in the social media. Kids can be taught this. This is a muscle that is out of practice and it's going to be sore. And that's where you're going to get some kickback. But it will be worth it if you stay positive and can and work with them, help them see those connections every day. They will start to see them themselves. I promise it feels a little bit long at times. Don't get frustrated. Remember, all kids run through this. Some adults are running into this. So we need to make sure we don't get frustrated, stay super positive, and you'll definitely get, get through that. So a couple of examples are those bell ringers. Um, let's see. Oh, it switched screens on me. So like we can pull up bell ringers um, that will build on the day before. And so we can, you know, find the length in terms of T. We've got different ways that we can... Um, look at, I'm trying to think which I didn't worry so much about. Well, that doesn't look right. Um, but the bell ringers, let's see, translating graphs, right? So linear equations, we're learning about all those formulas at this. So we're going to be stretching and compressing. The bell ringers are just going to be one, two, you know, these are supposed to be done in like five minutes or less. So write the rule. Let's pull up some success and build on the day before. So we've got our original and we've got our new ones. How are we moving that orange triangle? And have the kids write that triangle, have them feel successful. Now when you talk about today's work, hey, today's work, we're just gonna build on this. If they're feeling successful, I like to say that a lot. We are building on this. We're gonna add a couple things. I'm gonna challenge you in this one spot right? That's where your new meat comes in. But if by rewording it, making it sound less threatening, it is absolutely amazing um, the work at, that they'll do for you by that. Kathleen, I that is on my reading list. Um, I brain surviving the tech, 
and the Logical Alteration of the Modern Mind by Gary Small. He is on my reading list. If you enjoyed that, um, I think you would, this summer, I just got so into, it's called Deep Work. Um, I'd have to look up the author. I just blanked on it, but Deep Work, it talks about how we get, you know, that moment when you are in the zone. It also talked about um, some of that as well. And so actually, once I read Deep Work, somebody suggested that one to me. And I've heard it's absolutely fabulous. So I'm really excited to read that. I'm glad you reminded me because it's on my list. I'm going to write it down real quick. Very cool. So, yeah, it's all about making those connections and helping the students really work through that um, emotionally as well as the content. You've got to play both games. If you're going to succeed with kids in today's world that are living with more pressure than we've ever had, we, we have to help them with that as well. There we go. So once you begin helping students see the connections within the content, they won't feel like they're learning something new each day. It won't feel like a bunch of different puzzle pieces. It'll feel like one picture that they can see. And they're going to also, this is also going to help them retain as well as stay motivated. Because we know if the kids are motivated and they're trying in your class, they're going to pick up way more than if they're sitting there zoned out. So we want to make sure that we are building engagement, help, and this is going to help you move through much more effective. It's going to help the students feel more successful, and therefore it is going to make you feel much more successful. Now, how we're going to use this in any different situation is some people will say, I don't know how to use all this connected learning with my textbook or my teaching program. Or is this just something else I need to do? And I would think that this is something as you integrate it, it's not something that's going to be instantly your, your new habit. It's going to be something you're going to work at doing. And, um, but it certainly can be done with every single thing. So when you are, if you are using a traditional textbook right now, and it opens it up and it always has that activity in the beginning that a lot of teachers either work through with the students or they um, skip it altogether. Maybe you give them 10 minutes to try it and walk around and just ask those engaging questions. If they get the answer right away, well, could you draw a picture to represent that? How would you explain that to somebody younger than you? Um, asking questions that really help them to connect it. Can you teach it to the person next to you who was absent yesterday? Um, all of these things will really help. If they are stuck in the problem, have some questions ready that will connect it. And you'll really see how this can stretch. So we're gonna connect those dots in three ways for ultimate success. We're gonna connect with relationships. We're gonna make sure our words are supportive, encouraging. You guys all know that, I don't need to say that. Connection with the outside world and connection within the content. Let's build on that success. And I would ask that you try to make those t three different connections each and every day. It will help you. If you feel more connected to your students, you're going to feel more successful and just happier in the job. And if you make all those other connections as well, your students are going to be more successful. So I'm going to skip that real quick because I did get a little chatty there. And so let's try to remember with this simple understanding of how to connect to students, connect to prior knowledge, and connect to the applications. This strategy can be used to help students succeed and stay on pace. That's the big one, right? We're not going home and recreating another lesson for the same thing we already did. We're not going home and grading the same test four times as we do retake after retake. We're really helping them to succeed and see the big picture so when they see the big picture, it's going to be retained. So I hope you're enjoying this. I hope it's been very, very helpful um, and giving you some ideas of things you might want to try um, that might help them to bring it all back. Hopefully, as you think about these connections, it will bring back what they knew about quadratics, Amy, before they left on break. Um, that would be I really hope that you can go back tomorrow and think about some of these things as you work through. 
So what we covered is how to prepare students for assessments without reteaching the same thing over and over. We talked about how to use connections, help your struggling students stay motivated, even when the concepts are difficult. And secret three, how to use connected learning with any curriculum or teaching style. So one thing that people, um, a lot of teachers have asked me about is, have you put this all together? Is this, um, oh, I'm moving along too fast because Amy's um, comment just popped up for me. So what's the toughest thing? That is the toughest thing for me, connecting to the outside world. It can be really difficult. I mean, we talk about that a little bit in the, um, I've talked about that a little bit um, in other like Facebook lives and kind of things, but I've never really gone into it real in depth, but I'm planning on it. So that might be a good segue here. So I am introducing the Connect 180. Um, Connect 180 is going to be a six week live program starting in February. And for all members of the high school math teachers community, um, this is just going to be part of the whole um, membership if you join before tomorrow at midnight. Because to make all the changes, we're doing a lot of updates and improvements and adding the Connect 180 program. Uh, we need to shut it down to new members so that we can make all the changes and not get people locked out of the membership. Anybody who's already in, we've already set that up. They're not going to lose any access. So if you're considering, if you would like all of those resources, we've got it. So the Connect 180 is going to take everything we learned and go more in depth. We're going to have six weeks of live courses. So the, we're going to help you cover all the standards in one year, improve the test scores. You're going to start seeing results in your classroom within the first week without giving up time with your loved ones or feeling like you're failing or going too fast on your students. That is not the point of getting throughout the standards so that you feel like you're going too fast for them to learn. It's using these brain um, strategies, tricks, whatever we wanna call them, to help the students learn the same amount of material with less effort. I'm not saying they shouldn't have to work, but I'm saying that we can do this in a way that makes it more relatable for them. So if you're interested in joining the membership, I want to show you everything that you're going to get within, um, within this. Because I told you I would tell you how you're going to be able to get more help making these connections if this is something you're interested in. So you're going to get the Complete Algebra 1 course. That's where I was pulling the worksheets and the websites from. Um, let me show you very quickly. It's not what I was looking for there. Here it is. So when you go in here for every unit in Algebra 1, it doesn't matter which one, statistics here, um, you're going to get an outline. Um, you can download it as a complete unit as the PDF here. You get this for every unit for Algebra and for Geometry. So we have the... we. Um, do them as individual resources to make them searchable, but then to make them easier for you to print and throw in a binder and have them, we put all the individual resources together. So you're going to see we've got all the bell ringers, um, the unit four pacing guides, the lesson plans, and then all of the resources, as well as weekly assessments and um, the assessments at the end of each unit. So this is just our pacing guide to help us understand what we're teaching every day, as well as the skills list. Um, a lot of people have seen that, um, but I can go into that if anybody's interested. And then the lesson plans that are all editable. You saw I downloaded the PDF because it pops up here faster for us to talk. But I also offer this in Word so that you can go ahead and if you are teaching certain students, accommodations, special circumstances, you just type that in and then turn it in if you have to do that. Extra additional resources and then always reflect on it because that way next year you can just take, oh, this worked, this didn't work, I needed to ask this question. Uh, that really, really helps. If we know of an awesome technology, because um, so many teachers are required to implement technology, if we know of awesome technology, we also supply that there. 
And then um, just trying to skip through all the three weeks of lesson plans. So sorry, I should probably do it if we don't get dizzy here. But then you'll go through and you've got every activity. Um, you've got every, everything has an answer key, of course. Make it easier. We've got practice pages so that the students have extra, you know, practice to do, exit slips. And then we also have the PowerPoints ready for you. So we do have it like this set up so you can print it or the individual resources so you can browse through as well. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. Oh, I hit the wrong button one more time. There we go. And then of course you get the complete geometry course. The Algebra 1 course is split into 12 units. Geometry is split into 10 units. You get any of the um, other trainings that we've done along with you're going to get six weeks of the Connect 180 Masterclass where we're going to go really in depth with how to use those um, those words to connect with your students, connect the curriculum, connect it to the outside world. So Amy, we're going to spend like a whole thing finding resources and thinking through ways. And then we also have live group coaching where we're going to talk about this because what happens is as you make changes, you're going to get pushback if you're doing it well because kids are thinking more and that's okay. But we're going to talk about positive ways to deal with that pushback. And also if you get stuck, hey, I don't know how to connect this lesson to anything. We're going to have a Facebook group, live Facebook group that's private so you can talk about things and it's only with those teachers in the group. And so that's really powerful. So this was, you know, definitely in this course, because we're going to be working together, we want to encourage teachers who want their students to be successful, that know there's a better way. You don't have to feel frustrated or like you're hurrying your students all the time. Teachers are open to change. It's going to change some things that, you're, um, that you say. Um, and then teachers that want to make an impact. So Carol, you said, does your program adjust to block schedule? I am always happy. I have had members on block schedule, on trimesters. Um, as far as I did not do a pacing guide for a block schedule because I started to do that and people were on all sorts of crazy blocks. Um, and so like I had some people that were, see their students three out of the four days. And I had people who saw them Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I had people who saw them just for one semester, but for two hours. Um, so I was having a hard time adjusting it to fit everybody's needs. But what I can do, if you would like, is sit down and we could plan a time where we can make sure that it is all adjusted for you. Um, what I usually suggest is that you, um, you cut out a little bit, one of the activities, because once you got kids connected brain wise, then they don't need to do the second activity. And that gives you more time to maybe put them in groups for the practice work or give them time to do other things. And that seemed to work really well for a lot of um, the teachers who are on block schedule. So I hope that answers your question. But if you have questions and you would prefer to talk to me tomorrow or another time, just let me know. And I'm happy to do that. And we can look through it and see if it would work for your students. So sometimes people will think, I can't go changing things halfway through the year. That's the nice thing about this. This is not an overhaul. Your students aren't going to be like, ooh, what is she doing? This is all crazy. We're going to start just linking things for students. We're going to start helping them see how it builds on another day. And then as you get used to that, you're going to see what works really well. Then if you have things that you really want to overhaul, you're ready for the fall. You're ready to get going and really jump in. Now, once you have the course, you have the courses available to you as long as you're a member. Um, so, you know, if you want to look at it again in the summer, that's true. Kathleen, you teach middle school only. We will be offering the course later. Um, you know, just it's not only for Algebra 1 and Geometry teachers. It's just right now we're offering all the courses all the algebra and all the geometry in one package. So if that would be useful to you, then this is where that would be helpful. But we are going to split it up later um, so that if you are only teaching, you know, or if you only want the course or if you only want geometry, you can do that. Um, we are adding a lot more value to it. So it might be something you want to do um, for the cost at this time. So we get the Algebra 1, the Geometry, and the Connect 180 program. That 
I want to be real clear. That's going to start on February. I had it written down and my daughter stole my notebook. Um, February 6th. And then if you are busy in the evenings, I get it. I'm always driving kids around. Um, it will be recorded as well. So you don't have to, you know, commit to seeing it live. And then I also created some other tools for you. A 30 journal, um, 30 journal prompts, uh, connecting points, quick start. What that is, um, well, I've got it on slides here. A tracker system and then the brain research reference guide. Because um, I know when you're trying to document things for school improvement and that kind of thing, um, it's nice to have that. So the brain research guide is going to, is all of the brain research that we've used to build this and it's all in one guide with the title the link as well as a short write-up so if you are in need of these um, you've got it uh, ready and you don't have to go searching Google for it we also wanted you to have 30 journal prompts when you're making change and you're trying to brainstorm these things out I want to keep you very positive when you're making change for the students you need to stay very positive and it's makes it much easier to see the positive in yourself and your students if we write it down just for a minute every night. And then I think this is the best thing ever, six weeks of live group coaching. So we're gonna get together as a group. You guys are going to be able to help each other and help myself. And I thought this was really powerful. Have you ever been in a colleague's classroom and thought if only they would do this, they wouldn't have that problem, right? So it's always so much easier when there's no emotion involved and you can just help each other. Him hey, having this issue, any ideas? They're gonna have way more ideas because they don't have the emotional attachment. For example, in that story, when B comes in and she's totally one of my success stories and I just adore her to death and I know her home life is rotten and I wanna be there for her and she's completely rejecting me that day because something went down with her mom the night before. It breaks your heart, and I'm too emotionally in it um, to sometimes see the best way to handle it. So having this group of teachers is just, I'm really excited for this and to work with that. I think it's going to be just so powerful. And so today, if you join the membership at the email subscriber webinar pricing, you will get automatic access to all of the Connect 180 course along with all of the other um, all of the other resources. Good heavens. So I wanted to make sure that you knew about that. I, you don't have to type that in. If you are interested, we would love to have you. And I'm just going to put a link right in the sidebar there. I need to make sure I can still see the chat in case there are things there. But for $39 per month, you could be part of that. So if you wanted to just join for the next three months, That'd be just under $120. Um, you get all the resources for the algebra, the geometry, any of the previous um, trainings we've done, like on Desmos and um, Kahoot and organization. You're going to get all of those as well as the Connect 180 program. And we're just absolutely thrilled to be offering it. So if you have any questions at all, I feel like I've been going, going, going. Please let me know. I love to work with you, and so I find it just really pretty awesome. If you ever want to connect with me or have individual personalized questions here, please feel free right here up at the top. You will see my email address, and that, that goes right to my inbox. So you can just click that and email me anytime or copy and paste it. And you'll be able to ask me any questions. But I would love to welcome you into the community. Feel free um, to jump right in. And then you'll get instant access. The number one question I get is, what if I'm at a different spot than you? As you can see, when you log in, you get everything. Because I don't know if you're on block schedules. And I don't know if you are, you know, teaching trimesters or whatever. So I give everybody everything. So the minute you log in, you're there. Carol, there's no minimum. I was, I was a teacher for 17 years. There's times people walked in in semester and said, hey, you're not teaching algebra anymore. You're teaching geometry this semester. You know, I'm not going to make you pay for something you don't need or you don't want. Um, 
so no, there's no minimum. You can come in for one month or you can stay even longer than that. Um, and I think there might be a bad link in here. So I'm going to make sure that you've got the right pricing because it should be um, 39. I want to make sure that's what you're being offered here. Just noticed a link here. There it goes. Oh no, it's it's good. I just want to make sure you got the right. If you go to the join now button in the website, the normal price is fifty dollars or forty nine dollars a month, and so I just wanted to make sure that you were getting the special pricing um, right here. So thank you so much. I am so glad that I added this extra night. I know everybody was busy. Um, a lot of people were busy. Um, with football games and all that fun stuff. So welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you were able to come. I hope you found this very helpful. And I really appreciate you spending some time with us this evening. This has been a lot of fun. And um, I really enjoyed your, in, your input and your questions. So I hope you have a great evening. And thank you so much.